Hi, my name is Natalie Kolich, and I'm a PhD student in the Affective Science area of the Psychology Department here at Stanford. I study adolescent development and factors that put adolescent girls at heightened risk for the development of depression in adolescence. Today I'm going to be talking with you about a set of important processes that we take for granted in our everyday lives. These are called executive functions. First, I'm going to give you an example of a pretty common scenario that requires the use of many different kinds of executive function. Maybe your goals are to finish the reading for your psych and sociology classes, or to start your power paper. So you start your day by dedicating a large block of time to each of your three classes. First, you'll start tackling some of your reading assignments, then you'll switch to the paper. An hour or two into your reading, you're inevitably going to face a potential distraction. This might disrupt your immediate goal of finishing your readings or your superordinate goal of having a productive day. Maybe a friend pops into your room to ask you to go out to lunch, or you remember a really great movie that you've been meaning to watch. You know that watching a movie or eating with your friend would be a lot more fun, but you also know how late you'll have to stay up to finish if you give in. You might also think about how your paper will get worse if you end up writing it late at night. You turn down your friend or turn off your computer and decide it's time to switch tasks and get started on that paper. This scenario highlights the many different kinds of executive functions that we all possess and often take for granted. Executive function is an umbrella term encompassing a set of processes that have to do with managing yourself and your resources to achieve a goal. These processes include both mental control and self-regulation and allow us to plan, focus our attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks at once. The brain needs executive function to filter out distractions, prioritize tasks, set and achieve goals, and control our impulses. But babies aren't born with fully developed executive functions. Rather, executive function develops from infancy all the way through early adulthood. The three most basic executive functions are cognitive flexibility, inhibition or self-control and self-regulation, and working memory. Cognitive flexibility allows you to switch gears and adjust changing demands or priorities. If you've ever played Jim Rummy, then you'll know you need to be able to match a set of cards by their number or suit. Keeping both these rules in mind and being able to act when you have either set of cards is a demonstration of cognitive flexibility. Inhibition or self-control is the ability to regulate your behavior and resist your impulses, to think before you act. Have you ever been really, really angry with a friend to the point of wanting to yell at them or even hit them? Inhibition is the ability that allows you to stop yourself. The last basic executive function is working memory or the ability to hold and manipulate information in your mind for a short period of time. For example, trying to remember a telephone number requires that you hold 10 independent digits in your head at one time. Executive function skills predict success throughout the lifespan, including academic success, occupational success, success in relationships, and even mental and physical health. These skills are crucial to being a healthy and productive member of society, which is why so many developmental psychologists are interested in the development of these skills early in childhood. One task scientists use to test children's executive function skills is called the Dimensional Change Card Sort Task. In this task, children are shown two target cards that are taped to a tray. They're then asked to sort a series of test cards. So for example, we might ask children to sort this deck of cards based on shape. So put the stars here and put the squares here. The experimenter then says, we're going to switch to another game. This time, the blue ones will go here, and the red ones will go here. This requires that children are able to flexibly shift from, from one rule to another, even though these rules are contradicting.
Although three-year-olds can tell you what the new rule is, most continue to sort the cards based on shape rather than color because they don't quite have the cognitive flexibility to do this mental task switching. A different explanation is that three-year-olds have a hard time inhibiting or stopping a rehearsed or prepotent motor response. It's not until around age five that children are able to represent both sets of rules in order to successfully sort the cards based on color or shape. So in summary, executive function develops from infancy into early adulthood, is important for many life skills, and is super interesting to study across development. For more readings, you can check out these papers. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.